Hi, this is a, a short comfy video. Uh, it's sort of an add-on to my uh, in-painting video that I put up recently. I'll put that in the uh, link to that in the uh, information below this video. And it's just a, uh, a variation on that theme really, which is quite fun. It's just fun really. So the workflow, you need to watch the <laughs> in-painting video first because I won't cover the same ground again. I'm only going to, I, or only very briefly. Um, <clears throat> what I'll do is um, is uh, cover cover the bit that's changed, which is this bit here. You can see my mouse waving around. This section here. And it occurred to me that uh, one way of doing an in-paint and getting the shape, because uh, drawing a shape in Mask Editor is murder. So you can make your, make your mask in Photoshop and import it. Well, I thought there are absolutely a ton of uh, silhouettes, cutouts online. And any one of them is sort of tailor-made for the job. So I thought, well, we'll make something to, to so we can exploit those free resources online. And uh, whoever this image is, I apologise, but I, I'm only using it for educational purposes. So I'll start at the very beginning, but I'm going to skim very quickly over, over the first parts. So we have our background image that we want to in-paint a character onto, and we crop an area out of that image that is 1024 square. It can be any proportion you want. This will adjust automatically because all the numbers, all the numbers feed around. And uh, here you decide where in the image you want your crop to be. So you, you go left and right here, up and down there. And that part is inter the interesting bit. So to do this sort of in-painting, you need to make an area of coloured noise in the right place on your background and areas of coloured noise change into other things very easily so you can run them at quite low surprisingly low denoises and get a good image so here's our completely ludicrous silhouette and this section here you don't really need to worry about uh, the numbers all feed in automatically so uh, so you could just leave this you might want to invert the noise occasionally to make it low uh, invert makes the noise darker, with invert off the noise becomes lighter, that's the only difference there. And uh, this, uh, this stuff here is just putting uh, this image, if it isn't square, this one is square, but if it wasn't square it would cut the image out and put it on um, a square the same size, which as you see it's done here. So it's made a square as big as this image, exactly the same size, and then it's dropped this silhouette on top of it. And once you've done that, you can move this around your scene. So this moves it around the scene and this changes the color and you can make it bigger or smaller here. So you've got full control. So this makes the silhouette on there bigger and smaller. This one changes its color and I've made it a bit bluey because I want a blue monster. And that produces this rather unlikely image. It would be probably better if it didn't have holes in it, but uh, but anyway, I, I couldn't be, uh, I wasn't too worried. It wasn't going to be a very uh, sensible image anyway. So then you send that off to be processed in a sampler and you have to do a prompt. We'll go into the prompt. So this is my prompt. Goofy Blue Herring Monster, Grand Hall, Windows. So plenty about the monster, lots about the place and so on. And it's got one Laura in here. That's the digital painting. There's notes all over the workflow, which I'll post below, and uh, you can you can if you follow them step by step. You should it should work. If it doesn't work, I'm not to blame anyway. So this has gone through only only to 0.45, and here's the result. Here's our monster, and you see all the background has changed. All the columns have changed. Uh, the floor hasn't changed much, but um, but it's changed a little bit. So the next thing we do. And this, this, you can adjust your monster. Here I've made him a little bit bluer and stronger in colour. You see the difference there? So I've used this to adjust his colour only a little bit. And then you use Mask Editor to paint over. I'm assuming you know how to use Mask Editor. Look it up. There's videos on how to do that. Uh, and I've basically masked him out. And then this will drop him back into the original background. So he's been taken out of this background and dropped back into the original background. And I, I quite like the, doing this stage full size because then I've got a bit of an idea of, you know, does it look all right? 
do I bother carrying on? <laughs> or shall I go back and try for a different monster? Anyway, this monster is uh, very goofy and nice. I like this monster. And then that monster goes down and is cropped again to exactly the same size again. But instead of the... So this image is identical to this one, except that this one has the rendered monster in it. And that's almost good enough, isn't it? In one. However, we can do better. That he needs to be made to put in his place. So that's sent off, made it, it's scaled up one and a half, and it's sent off to be refined. And the refiner um, is going at 0.35 denoise. So it's not going to change very much the image, but it'll just clean up these edges and, and where he's been dropped in. If you see that. So everything has improved there. But once again, the background has changed a little bit. So that image is sent back down. You, begin to, you should be able to begin to understand the pattern. We're just repeating the same pattern, actually, to, so that our background remains the same. Uh, you can do this and have your background change a lot. But um, the tricky part <laughs> is getting a good in-paint where the background doesn't change. Uh, I know people go on about in-painting nodes, in-painting models, in-painting this, that. They're all rubbish, I think. None of them could put a figure into a scene like this successfully every time. Um, this method, although it's a bit involved and a little bit more difficult, it does a much better job. And you can put in bigger things. And if you in-painted in the normal way, the in-painting model, and, uh, and using a mask, you wouldn't get the uh, reflection in the floor or his shadow. Indeed, he wouldn't be lit like he's in the room. So this is why I do it this way, just merely because the result is a, is a great deal better. It's also easier. Now, it doesn't take many minutes to go through. It takes me about um, four minutes to go through the whole process. So uh, it's not really that hard. So this is then bumped up in size so it'll fit back into the original image. And this drops him back into the original image and you're doing the same thing again. See, mask editor, I've masked, I've painted in mask editor all the bits from this render I want. So this is a refined image. You can control the mask here by expanding it, contracting it or blurring it. And you don't need to regenerate. Uh, you can mess with this as much as you want. And here is our wacky monster dropped in. And please note, you have shadows, you have rim light from the lighting, you have reflection, got a little bit of a colour cast there, but I could, I'm not sure I'd bother, because that's the reflection of the window, I quite like that being a bit bluey, um, but you could come back here and change this. I've got it minus five, which is probably a bit too much, and that's just changing the colour a little bit. But you could, you, you could correct that at, at that point. Um, if it worries you, I quite like the bit of blue in there because he's blue. I don't, doesn't worry me. I wouldn't change that probably. And that is the whole job done. Um, you can do yet another refine, uh, which I've done here. I've blown him up just, just because I, I wanted him to sit in the scene. Now this is going to change the background a little bit. So I've resized him and then he goes through a denoise 35. There's our final. And as you see, that colour cast hasn't mattered. And we've got little changes in here. And if you want to go mad and make him through huge, you can put him through a um, McBurty refiner in larger. But you'll have to change the prompt. Here's the prompt. We have to demote the monster, otherwise it'll make monsters everywhere. And here he is. He's sadly missing a horn. I don't know. If you did a different seed, you'd probably get, a, get the horn. And it's made a monster in the column. column. Look at that. I quite like that. That was rather good. But uh, the, the missing hall isn't so good. But um, but he is even better, as you see. Even the detail on the hairs around the arm. And he's a perfect fit. So there we go. I think that's covered the lot. Only a brief video. And as I say, I'll put the link to the original video in the description below. So, okay, thank you for watching. And that's the lot.